were, first of all, people on both sides of the Pacific expect a dramatic increase in investment and merger and acquisition activity in entertainment and media and advertising in the years to come. Where the differences emerged were in the motivations of investors on both sides, their views of the obstacles to M&A and investment activity, uh, and the types of deals that they were most interested in. Motivations are different. For Americans investing in China in these industries, the primary motivation is to get access to Chinese markets uh, and to gain a foothold in China. Perhaps that's not surprising. China is the biggest undertapped market in the world for the U.S. entertainment industry. So that's our motivation. For Chinese investors coming to the United States, gaining a foothold in American markets was very secondary. Only 28% of them were interested in that. What more than half were interested in was gaining access to American technology and American know-how in entertainment, media, and advertising. Each side has its perception of what the obstacles are on the other side of the Pacific. The number one obstacle for both, 44% of the Chinese investors, 42% of the American investors, was, perhaps not surprisingly, government intervention and regulation on the other side of the Pacific. Uh, for Chinese investors, they're worried about what the U.S. government will do, whether it will stop deals, and American investors have similar concerns. The second most prominent obstacle, interestingly, was information, but in a completely opposite way. American investors going into China were concerned about the lack of information, the difficulty of doing adequate due diligence on the Chinese companies in which they were investing. The information concern among Chinese investors coming to the United States was just the opposite. Too much information. That is to say, the American requirements for information, disclosure, and transparency were far greater than the Chinese companies were used to, de to dealing with in China and comfortable with. So there so are some substantial differences in both sides. The one common factor that underscores all of it is a belief that there will be, despite obstacles, an increase in this cross-border investment and M&A activity in entertainment, in digital media, and in advertising as the years go forward. Is that the motivations on each side are so powerful, as expressed to us by survey participants, that they're motivated to overcome the obstacles and get deals done. And I think as experience mounts on both sides of the Pacific, investors will become more culturally sensitive to what the concerns are on the other side, how the other side does business, and more adept at navigating those straits. Uh, there were about four really big deals of Chinese coming to the United States. The biggest, of course, was Dalian Wanda's and acquisition Wanda of AMC, AMC theaters, mm -hmm. two and a half billion dollars. That, that really pumps the numbers, sure. but it, it does reflect the kind of deal that people are looking to do. We little... think we're brand conscious here in the United States, but the Chinese are even more brand conscious than we are and buying into brands and investing in brands is something that's very I mean, important. This, this uh, for many Chinese investors and government officials who I talk to, uh, there is another motivation, and that is China understands great building factories, making different products, but there is a value and a power in intellectual property uh, and, and in the media assets uh, that America is so great at exporting that allows America not to just make money on its exports, but to export American values and American culture to the world. And I think a lot of Chinese see this in the long run as a way to improve their own product so that they can export Chinese culture and Chinese value to the world. And that goes beyond you know, buying Pebble Beach and, and stubbing your toe and realizing you paid too much for it. It's okay if you pay a little too much if you, if you bring something that's going to have value to the country. I mean, it's sort of raised, when will they buy a big American media company? Sony did it right? in the 80s. I mean, Matsushita did it as well. Matsushita, Matsushita bought did, Universal right? and, and people at the time and said, it. and sold it. <laughs> um, but people at the time said, wow, what will happen if, you know, a Japanese company buys a studio and I mean, we is, saw that, is that, do you see that coming down the pike? I mean, they bought AMC, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think it is a possibility.